Hello. This presentation corresponds to the advanced part of O11, which focuses on advances in broadband technologies. In this advanced part, we have two different blocks, one in backbone and another in access. Inside the, this, this block on backbone technologies, we have three different topics. In this first block, this slide, focus on elastic optical networks. We will have a second block on optical packet switching technologies and a third one on software defined networking focusing on, on, on optical networks. So let's go with this first part, which as I said before is about elastic optical networks. The elastic optical networks is a new architecture for optical networks. It's motivated by, by, by the huge growth of traffic that we have seen during last years. We have seen how many new uh, applications have generated a huge amount of traffic and this is not the only point but this traffic is really heterogeneous so we have many different IP applications that have many different requirements. Some applications require huge bandwidth, some applications require stringent quality of service uh, requirements and some years ago, actually in 2009, some researchers found that it was necessary to change the wavelength grid that we have currently in WDM networks. The reason to do that is that this grid did not fit with uh, uh, very high bitrate channels such as 400 gigabit per second and it was not suitable for um, very small connections as, as we have many different kind of, of applications we need a more flexible grid so we need to change how we allocate the spectrum inside optical fiber so the, the, the main point of uh, elastic optical networks was on changing the, the uh, grid inside the fiber so changing the how the, the channels inside the optical channels inside one fiber are distributed So we are not only allocating resources for finite time, eh, but we are also allocating different, different uh, uh, quantities of the spectrum depending on the requirements of every connection. So maybe we have a jumbo channel which needs more than the typical 50 gigahertz that we have in the in the uh, uh, wavelength div division multiplexing grid and we have smaller connections we can see here for example for gaming we don't need we don't need very huge bandwidth but probably we need a small quantity of bandwidth for for a, for a small time other other applications could require uh, a huge bandwidth for long time or could require a, a, a small bandwidth for long time or, or, or huge bandwidth for, for short time. So this is the, this heterogeneity on, on the traffic and the point is let's assign the spectrum in a way that it can satisfy any kind of, of traffic. This uh, highly heterogeneous traffic. This way we, we will have a better spectrum use, so a more efficient spectrum usage. There are two main technological achievements that have made possible the birth of elastic optical networks. On one hand we have variable bandwidth transceivers. So and no, a, a new generation of transceivers which are able to work at 
any bit rate from gigabits to up to terabit per second are now commercially available. On the other hand, we have flexible spectrum selective switches. So we have a noble generation of, sh of, of wavelength switches that are able to select different uh, bands of, of the spectrum and to switch them to the appropriate output. So the combination of these bandwidth variable transceivers, this mm, flexible grid uh, 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 um, concept and the, the intelligent client nodes makes possible this new elastic optical network. And this indeed makes possible that, that the internet service providers are able to, to, to offer new services to, to cope with the requirements of, of the growing traffic so they, they can hold uh, 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 on the on on the on the internet advances for the future years so the main characteristics of, of elastic optical networks are that the optical spectrum is not any more rigid but it can be divided mm, in, a, in a flexible way the transceivers can generate uh, uh, um, flexible optical connections with variable bit rate so they uh, flexi flexibly uh, adapt to the requirements of, of the users using this these characteristics we can adjust the optical connections uh, 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 to the different needs that that we have at the internet so we can we can do we can enlarge the optical reach of the connections we can change the, the bandwidth needs of, of these connections there is a kind of, of trade-off between required reach and spectral efficiency so by changing the modulation format we can use a more robust in front of physical impairments a, a more robust modulation format for longer distances and, and, and we can use a less robust uh, modulation format for shorter distances the, the one of the already commented advantages is that we can allocate in the network these expected super channels which were not possible to allocate with the fixed division of the spectrum. Another another advantage is that we can put optical channels closer to each other, so we have an advantage in, in spectrum efficiency. And, and finally, the summary about that is that we have this kind of dynamic networking. Here we can see how in the existing ITU grid, we have all the channels separated 50 gigahertz. So even our, our need is for 10 gigahertz, we allocate a whole 50 gigahertz channel. By using this new flexible elastic concept, the, the allocated spectrum fits perfectly the needed bandwidth of each channel. This means that we can allocate 10 gigahertz for a 10 gigabit per second channel or we can allocate uh, 200 or more gigahertz for these jumbo channels for these super channels of 4, 4 gigabit per second or even 1 terabit per second so the main point in elastic optical networks is in this elastic assignment of the spectrum once again th th this allows by, by mainly flexibility in the allocation of resources in the optical network so any given demand can be assigned a different modulation format can be assigned a different spectrum depending on the on the required reach can be assigned a different uh, forward error correction uh, mm, scheme and, and and all of these parameters can be adjusted for 
each one of the connection depending on the requirements of, of the traffic to be transported so in order to put this elastic optical networks into operation some some technological changes are needed the first one stems from 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 the own definition of elastic optical network as we are allocating and and, and, and turning down connections dynamically there is a, a main problem in this kind of networks that is known as spectrum fragmentation to solve this problem sometimes some processes have to be have to be run to dynamically change where the connections are allocated in the spectrum inside the fibers another change another nece necessity of this kind of networks is that the, the transceivers that, that can be adapted to the requirements of the connections have to be reconfigurable. This is a link with the, with the uh, last part of, of this module, which is software-defined networking. Another need of this kind of networks is that uh, uh, routing and spectrum allocation uh, algorithms are, are really sophisticated because they have many parameters to, to be taken into account finally uh, wavelength, wavelength selective switches with higher number of ports are expected to be present of the, uh, uh, in this kind of networks and uh, uh, mixed modulation format and, and, and multi-rate channels are expected to be present in this kind of networks here we have some words about how the, the optical switches will evolve for this kind of networks the main message here is that uh, we need these flexible switches and this is related to the availability, the technological advances in, in novel technologies such as microelectromechanical systems, like with crystals of silicon or and, and integrated photonic circuits. This is not the focus of this presentation, but we have to, to, to take into account that we need some advances, some technological uh, uh, requirements before this kind of networks is completely operative. Here we have uh, one example on, on how these networks are expected to work. We have different demands and we have in the upper part of this figure how we are using same uh, uh, spectrum channels for any kind of connection and we see that in the in the in the below part of the figure we adapt the, uh, the spectrum assigned to each one of the connections to each one to each one of the of the flows by means of this uh, sliceable ba ba bandwidth variable transceiver and by means of this flexible reconfigurable OIDM we are assigning the required spectrum to each one of the connections of course we are saving spectrum that, that is the main purpose of this kind of of, of networks the, this elastic optical networks is also related with novel technologies such as optical OFDM modulation formats and, and different ways of, of of achieve this let's say spectrum efficient uh, uh, use of, of the spectrum available in optical fibers in summary we have a new network architecture a new network concept where the optical spectrum is adaptively allocated to the connections the, the, the necessary resources are, are, are divided adapting to the requirements it's tightly related with novel technologies 
and the, the, the problems that we want to solve with this with this novel network concept is to to tackle the, the granularity difference between client and the optical layer in clients we we usually talk about demands of 10 gigabit per second and the available spectrum in the optical fibers is of tens of terahertz so we have a mismatching here and and by using this kind of elastic optical networks we can solve or we we can minimize this this granularity difference on the other hand we are we are trying to improve the spectrum efficiency in optical networks finally you have some references on, on, on elastic optical networks the first one from 2009 is the seminal research article about elastic so the concept of elastic optical networks came with this with this paper the second one is uh, also a, a, a very known paper about that and the third one focuses on, on uh, uh, novel node architectures for elastic optical networks that's all in this first part thank you for your attention and uh, uh, see you in next blocks thank you